V Rising is an isometric survival RPG in which you play as a vampire and a game that I've covered multiple times on this channel since its initial early access release back in 2022. The last video I made about V Rising was actually the video that I was the most proud of releasing back in 2023 and was an hour long full completion review of the Gloom Rot update. Well now V Rising has finally left early access and is a fully complete product along with another absolutely massive update, bringing new bosses, a new zone, new mechanics, improved progression, and items at all stages of the game. In this video, I'll once again play through the entire game and take on every boss, eventually leading up to the brand new endgame giga boss, Dracula the Immortal King. This video is sponsored by Stunlock Studios, but I've covered V Rising non-sponsored multiple times in the past and I've put hundreds of hours into the game over the years. V Rising's full release brings gamepad support and the game will also be releasing on PlayStation, so click the link in the description below to buy V Rising on Steam or Wishlist on PlayStation now. Starting out, V Rising has a few different modes. Online play has PvE servers, PvP servers, or duo PvP. For this video, I'll be playing on my own server because I like fine-tuning my own rules. In private game, you've now got three different difficulty options. Relaxed, Normal, and Brutal mode. Brutal mode is a new addition to V Rising for seasoned veterans of the game. As I've already beaten the game on Normal in the past, I decided to give this a try. Fine-tune a few server settings, I basically 3x the gathering rates and tick a few boxes to make things more convenient and less grindy since I'll be playing alone, and start new game. Go through an intro cutscene and we can then create our character. Here I noticed V Rising has added many new customization options since the last time I played. Hairstyles, accessories and some extremely creepy face types. Make our vampire and enter the world awaking from our coffin. Next we go through a bit of a tutorial phase, placing our first base, crafting some basic weapons and armour, and doing a bit of gathering before heading out to take on the first boss of Act 1. Alpha the White Wolf was our first kill target and it's important to mention that I have never died on this boss before. It's actually one of the easiest bosses in the game normally, but in this case we're playing on Brutal Mode. And Brutal Mode is exactly what it says it is. Absolutely brutal. Holy! Is this what Brutal Mode is? 100% that's brutal mode. How the fuck have I died to Alpha Wolf? After getting wrecked I got some gear upgrades and finally managed to beat the Alpha Wolf being 4 item levels higher than intended. I then attempted the second boss, Rufus the Foreman, and it became quickly apparent that it would take me a tremendous amount of time and many hundreds of deaths to beat this game on brutal mode, so I switched to normal mode and took him out no problem. Brutal mode seems to be harder in every aspect. Bosses attack faster, have enhanced mechanics, deal more damage, have more health, and just as described really is a mode for veterans who want a real challenge from start to finish. With the difficulty changed to normal, I started blasting through the Act 1 bosses, Keely the Frost Archer, Errol the Stonebreaker, Grayson the Armorer, Gorswine the Ravager, Clive the Firestarter, and Linda the Chaos Archer. So here's the difference between brutal mode and normal mode. Linda is uh, like a red target. I shouldn't be fighting her right now, but on normal mode, no problem. On brutal mode, I bet she would absolutely decimate me. She hasn't hit me with a single ability yet. There it is. Longbow, that's a new weapon. That wasn't in the game the last time I played. You got a Q ability, which shoots in an arc. Yeah, that's cool. I'm glad that they've finally added longbows to the game. Previously in V Rising, when defeating a boss, you would unlock one specific ability from that boss, but now you get spell points which you can use to choose between two or three different abilities to unlock depending on the tier, which will allow players to start playing their favourite build much earlier in the game and allow for greater flexibility. Act 1 also comes with a new boss fight in the form of Finn the Fisherman, which was actually quite an epic looking boss fight for so early on in the game. Okay, Finn the Fisherman, new boss that wasn't in the game the last time I played. Fished up some puffer fish. That's kind of cool. Oh, he's just summoned a like a sea monster. This is a really cool boss. I'm impressed. A boss that fishes up summonable allies. Big damage. Finn the Fisherman defeated. The thing I love about V Rising is every single time they update the game, they always add things not just to the end game, but they also make good impactful changes to the early game. Like new early game bosses, they change around the map, add new locations, refine things, and just make the experience all the way from the early game to the late game, the mid game, 
every part of the game is always improved whenever they update it. Another interesting addition to V-Rising you'll notice when playing through Act 1 is the addition of different gear sets with various set bonuses. Once again, this adds more player choice to the game, as well as some nice variation in vampire fashion game. I decided to go with a rather fabulous looking warlock set. Feeling strong, I quickly dispatched the rest of the Act 1 bosses in the form of Pelora the Feywalker, Kodia the Ferocious Bear, Nicholas the Fallen, Quincy the Bandit King, and finally Tristan the Vampire Hunter. With that, I can unlock an ultimate ability. I've got two choices. Army of the Dead. I like that. Four Skeleton Warriors and four Skeletal Mages. Lasts for 10 seconds. That's really strong. Army of the Dead. Fuck it, we'll pop it. Okay, that's cool. And it's only on a two minute cooldown. That is so fun. Heading into Act 2, it was time to check out another amazing convenience addition to V-Rising's full release, Base Relocation. Simply have 100 Blood Essence in your inventory, head to the location you want to relocate to, clear the area and place a Base Relocation Heart. Connect it to your old base, then just start placing the structures down at your new location. Very quick and easy. I then spent the next hour building, chopping and organising my new castle. Next I mined some iron ore to work on crafting the next tier of weapons and armour, as well as start killing the Act 2 bosses. Another really nice addition to V-Rising for the full release is improved storage convenience. Very early on you're able to craft specific storage for gems, materials, plants, alchemy, consumables and so on. This saved me so much time when sorting through my inventory and storage, although one thing the game still doesn't have which I really wish it would, is the ability for crafting stations to automatically pull the required crafting materials directly from your storage. This is honestly the number one thing I want added to V Rising, as throughout this playthrough, even with improved storage convenience, I was still wasting so much time running from storage to storage, taking things out, crafting an item, then putting the mats back in the storage. There's no need for this to be the case, and especially later on when you've got 10 to 12 separate dedicated storages, it becomes really annoying to have to manually take things out every time. Please, V Rising devs, allow crafting stations to pull all of my mats directly without me having to take them out of the storage. Thank you. Act 2 now has two brand new bosses to fight with V Rising's full release, both of which require you to travel to the new Dracula themed region, the Ruins of Mortium, a zone that actually doesn't have to deal with the effects of sunlight. The first boss you'll take on is General Eleanor the Hollow, which will unlock a new crafting station called the Altar of Stygian Awakening, which you can use to upgrade your passives. Admittedly though, it wasn't until much later in the game that I understood how to actually upgrade these passives or collect the Stygian shards, as the game doesn't mention it as part of the recommendations in the top left of your screen. At level 57 you'll fight another new boss, General Cassius the Betrayer, who will allow you to unlock some other cool craftables. Again, at the time I didn't know how to get the Stygian shards or the importance of them, and the game did a pretty poor job of explaining this new system. Understanding Stygian shards and rift incursions, which we'll get to later, should really be a part of the recommendations in the top left. Something strange I noticed about Act 2 was that I unlocked the upgraded recipe for a new weapon type in the form of whips, but to actually unlock the ability to craft the base version of the whip, you need to beat a new boss called Simon the Vampire Hunter that's somewhere between level 77 and 83 and isn't even displayed in Act 2. I found this kinda strange and think he should be displayed in the V-Blood section much earlier in the game. Let's go take on Octavian, the militia captain. Big damage. Nuke him down. Oh my good god. Okay, change the build. Change the build. Okay, we got him. With Octavia, the militia captain defeated, we then set our sights north towards Gloomrot South and the Cursed Forest, where we'd once again be upgrading our weapons and armor to the next tier. But first, my base was starting to get really cramped, so it was time for a bit of expansion.
With my castle looking better than ever, I then crafted my first ancestral weapon in the form of the Forager's Longbow, which I lucked out on pretty hard with basically perfect stat rolls for my build. This weapon would be carrying me for the next 10 hours or so. Act 4 and it was time to head west to the holy land of the Silverlight Hills where I'd start by farming some silver ore to upgrade my weapons, as well as take out Magnus the Overseer on the way. It was at this point with an item level of 70 that I constructed a new craftable called Eye of Mortium that allowed me to partake in a new event system added to the game called Incursions, which would drop lesser and greater Stygian shards which I could then use to upgrade my passive abilities, roll for legendary weapons and craft tier 4 gems. There's two types of rift incursions, minor incursions which are designed for players around item level 57 and major rift incursions for item level 80 plus. With me finally starting to understand the new rift incursion and Stygian shard system, it was time to head back to the Silverlight Hills and tear through some bosses. Marowin the Elementalist, so far so good. Oh my god! It's taking super damage now. Got her. Another one bites the dust. Straight to the next boss. Morian the Stormwing Matriarch. Strong start with the DPS. It's a lot of ads. Summon my mobs. We need to distract. Keep healing. GG. Next boss. Straight into the outpost. Wait, is this even where the boss is? I don't think it is. I think I have made a fatal error. Oh god. Summon everything. This is not where I want to be. Gone to the completely the wrong location, thinking that this is where the boss is, in the middle of the daylight, and we're about to get wrecked. Oh, we killed everything. It worked out for us in the end. So where is this boss? Here he is. Next boss. So this is the boss where you need to dodge all of the barrels. Pretty fun one. Oh, but his barrels actually just flatten my ads. That's not good. Ouch. Oh, you can shoot the barrels. That's nice to know. That's a cool boss. We got him here. GG. Baron defeated. Not too difficult. Craft the Blood Merlot amulet. Massive upgrade. At level 74, I decided to try my luck with a major rift incursion. The mobs and bosses for this were level 84, so needless to say, I really struggled. The main problem is that you do massively reduced damage to mobs that are a higher level than you. I did manage to clear one of these incursions, but I realised that it took so long that it wouldn't be worth doing until I was at an appropriate item level. Next I killed more bosses and spent some time grinding the poor souls of Brighthaven to pillage their corpses for gold, jewellery and schematics to unlock a full set of level 8 gear. So next we're going to make our level 25 amulet followed by our level 8 gear. Let's make the full set of Malphysus Scholar gear. How do we look? Very nice. At level 81, I was now appropriately geared for major incursions, so I spent an hour grinding out greater Stygian shards, which I'd then spend on upgrading my passives for some really nice bonuses, and during this grind I stumbled upon another new boss, General Valencia the Depraved, who actually killed me on my first attempt. She's going to be strong, isn't she? So far, so good. No! Why did I blink back into- I'm a- Oi! Fucking hell, good reactions. Well played, Craig. Kicked her ass. Yeah, very cool boss. I liked that one. It's probably my favourite and new boss that they've added to the game, mechanically wise. Ooh, what's this? I got an orange thing. Is this my first legendary? The Morning Star. Sanguine Whip. The other things I've been having drop have been uh, epic, like purple. But this is my first orange. I guess I'm going to have to build the Sanguine Whip. Next I travelled to another new area north of the Dunley farmlands called Dracula's Demise and got to take on another really cool boss called Lord Styx the Night Champion. Once again I got wrecked on my first attempt. Just woken up so I'm not entirely with it right now. He summons two gargoyles, summon my monsters, that's not good, heal, heal, oh god. Should we just try and kill the ads? I think we should. Okay we're off to a very good start here, playing very well, oh and we got him. And he hardly damaged me that time. All it took was uh, was one attempt to warm up, get used to it. And we've taken him out. Good fight. This boss would probably be insanely hard on brutal mode. I think all of them would be, to be fair. So now I've killed that guy, I can use bat form, which is going to be massively convenient. The only thing with bat form is you can't use it in the daytime. Finally, it was time to hunt down Sir Belmont the Vampire Hunter, the boss that unlocks whips. Quite an easy boss fight and I was kind of confused why he appears so late in the game on the V-Blood table to unlock whips as a craftable. With all the normal bosses slain it was time to fully upgrade my gear, craft consumables and min-max everything in preparation to take on the 4th final Giga endgame soul shard bosses. 
So now we have four Giga Endgame bosses, starting with Solaris the Immaculate and ending with Dracula the Immortal King. Let's start with Solaris. I don't think this guy is going to last very long against my build. Go in there, pop everything. Oh, he's already at half health. We are unbelievably strong. Oh, I think we need to kill the, the angel first. I thought the boss fight was, was over. I completely forgot about the angel you need to kill. What is all the stuff you need to avoid? Dodge, dodge, dodge. Pop the ulti. He's going to die now. Big damage. Sit. The power of the necromancer build, once again, reigns supreme. Here he is, next boss, the winged horror. Big damage, he is getting nuked. Okay, then it goes up in the air. Look at his shadow. You know, the winged horror is the uh, is the easiest one by far. And it's dead. And now we have two bosses remaining. Adam the Firstborn, who I've still got PTSD from. And Dracula, the immortal king. Never fought Dracula before. I remember the first time I fought this guy, I was wiping on him for absolutely hours. But it felt so good when I finally got him down. I'm actually nervous. Let's go, big damage. Oh shit, I'm panicking. Then we got phase two. That's- Oh we, we fucked that up. Did we just reset him? I did. Fuck. Attempt number two. Okay, phase one. Oi. Oi. Oh, we got him. Adam the Firstborn defeated. Oh my god, I completely forgot to craft Dracula gear. No wonder I was struggling against him. Donkey. Three out of the four Soul Shard bosses slain, and it was time to craft a full set of Dracula equipment, taking my gear score to 90, and to take on the current final boss of the game, the legendary Lord Dracula himself. Min max by equipping the max level bag. That's going to give me another 8 health. Maybe that's the difference. The difference between success and failure. Dracula's castle. Here it is. There he is. There's Dracula on his throne. <laughs> I'm nervous. I hope he doesn't kick my ass too much. Luckily, there's some pillars I can hide behind by the looks of it. Let's go. Oh, he's dodged my first attack straight away. Pop the ulti. Big damage. He's turned into a dog. What's this? I think I need to get in close and... Dodge out of... Oh, that's a cool mechanic. I like that. What's this mechanic? Darkness. A bat has appeared. Oh, wow. Now he's blood draining me. Almost executed me. Pop out of damage. Got him to about half health. Really good first attempt. He's dropped some health globes. Let's pop a heal. Oh, yes. Then we hide behind the pillow. Phase two looks like it's about to begin. Pop the ulti. Big damage. Oh, it looks like I need to smash this crystal. If I was to guess. Whilst dodging everything else. Very cool, boss. We're so close. Do we get him? Is that it? No way we one-shot Dracula. Bloody hell, that was epic. I loved that boss. All of his attacks were so well telegraphed. And, like, visually, it was such a spectacle as well. Very nice. We only did it on normal mode. I can imagine on, um, brutal mode, it's, like, super hard. Larry as he, like, catches fire. Flame tornado. V Rising in 2024. Just when I thought the game couldn't get any better with the Gloomrat expansion, they release all of these updates, fix pretty much every con that I listed the last time I covered the game, and they add an extra tier of gear and enhanced progression on top of that. Only one more thing to be done, finish off the Dracula set. There it is, we've finally completed the full Dracula set, and the only thing left for me to do is build the throne that I've unlocked. No, Throne of Darkness. Oh, that's absolutely massive. And now I am the king. There it is, the Throne of Darkness. Can we sit on it? Yes, we can. V Rising in 2024. It's been a lot of fun. Let's wrap up the video here. So after revisiting V Rising in 2024, my pros and cons list is pretty much the same as it was in my previous video, except with the addition of a few things. The game is finally fully released and feels like a complete product with a satisfying end boss and progression. They finally added controller support and the game will be releasing on PS5, and I personally loved the introduction of rift incursions as a mid to end game farm that you can do to experience non-stop combat, something the game was previously lacking. As for the cons, there's only one thing I really want to highlight as the other cons I listed in my previous videos have been fixed. Despite the improvements made to dedicated storage, I still find it extremely tedious manually taking resources in and out of your storages when crafting. If you could just use a crafting station and have it auto-pool all your resources, then I think the game would be in a near-perfect state. 
Overall, V Rising has been a game that I've praised heavily ever since its early access launch two years ago. I actually didn't expect to make another video about it so soon after my massive documentary length playthrough last year, but the full release brings so many positive changes and content additions that really smooth out and complete the experience that it was definitely worth another playthrough. Currently, V Rising for me is a 9 out of 10 game. If they implement my feedback in regards to storage and crafting, then for me personally, it could be pretty close to a 10 out of 10. But that's it for this video. As always, let me know your thoughts on V Rising in the comments below. Will you be revisiting this game or buying it for the first time for the full release? What would you like to see for the future of this game? Big shout out to Stunlock Studios for the sponsorship today, and don't forget to click the link in the description below to buy V Rising on Steam or Wishlist on PlayStation. Help us out with a like for the algorithm gods if you enjoyed the content, social media on screen, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.